Greetings, people of the world. Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Eternal Sonata as we begin Chapter 4, Grand Vals Brilliant. So we have just finished our journey with Group 1, so now we meet up with Group Number 2, the four members of our party who were separated after we were all scattered by the destruction that Tuba did. So it's time to once again meet up with Beat, Frederick, Salsa, and of course, Polka. And there's Polka, Polka right there. Polka. There you are. I've been looking all over the place for you, you know. Oh, hi, Beat. I'm sorry about that. Hey, are you thinking about Rattle and the others? You don't have to worry about them. I'm sure they're all okay. Besides... Yeah, all of you guys survived. Reddo's not the type to croak from just falling off a bridge. <laughs> well, neither did you. You have a point there. I'm sure you're right. Thank you, Beat. Still, we were pretty lucky back there, don't you think? Yeah, they were. If we hadn't been picked up by that Baroque ship, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah, so now it's time for a flashback. Thank you so much for helping us like this. In fact, this entire next set of episodes will Don't be flashback sense. style. There's nothing. Is there any way we can repay you? You did save our lives. Yeah, you've already done so much for us. Is there anything we can do to help out? <laughs> this little squirt here can wash dishes for you or something. Yeah, it is now on. Between beat and salsa. Hey, no you can't start calling me Little Squirt just because my hat washed away. <laughs> <laughs> At least it sounds like you're all in good spirits. But I'm afraid there's nothing you could help with. Oh, no? Really, you should probably all just get some rest. I guess that's a good idea. Oh, and allow me to introduce myself. My name is Crescendo. I suppose you could say I'm the captain of this ship. Yeah, you can even see the Tricrescendo logo uh, on his cr uniform. Crescendo? Cres Gee, that's kind of a tough name to say. Well, he is still young. Can we call you something else? Something easier to say? Be please, don't be silly. Besides, I thought you said you were good at remembering people's names. Remembering them, maybe, but not necessarily pronouncing them, right? I'm <laughs> very young to be the captain of a ship. You're a captain? Yeah, Salsa's not necessarily convinced. Hey, hold on now. This guy doesn't even have a hook or an eye patch. Hm. There's no way he's a real captain. Yeah, she is not thinking correctly. Her mind is not thinking I'm that sorry, way. Captain. I apologize for rudeness. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, still Maybe proving that Salsa is anything but a Southern Belle. I remember your name, no problem. But you need to show respect to the ship's captain. Exactly. <laughs> and even a salute to Boots. <laughs> yeah, see what I did there? Really. Well, Captain Crescendo, thank you for your kindness. I think we'll get some rest as you suggested. And so that we shall do. But we have other things to take care of first. Yeah, I got a little fountain in here that's going. And hey, it's Christmas time again, even though spring is on a bit of a delay. Salsa's out like a light. But there's a lot weighing on Polka's mind. I wonder if Allegretto and the others are alright. I think I'll go outside. Maybe some fresh air will cheer me up. Yeah, it's been snowing again around here, even though we're now... A few days officially into spring, but you wouldn't know it, judging by the weather outside. So, yes, it's Christmas time again. So, yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone, because the snow ain't going away. Now, I could use the save point here, but I'm just going to focus on taking care of some other things first. I want to make sure that there is nothing to find in here. Let's scour the bedroom. Okay, yeah, just an observation by, by Polka. Another Christmas tree. Is there anything we can talk to you about? Well, never mind. Um, let's go back over this to the other side because I want to see if there was anything in the 
bedroom that I was current, previously based in. Um, not gonna bother with Salsa, cause she's a jerk. Alright, yeah, nothing of importance, so we can go upstairs. Just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. So time for another cutscene. Yeah, isn't the music beautiful? And with a beautiful snowfall as we're going along this body of water aboard this Baroque ship. So yeah, we get to meet the people that Forte wants to fight against and to declare an invasion on. I want to go up this side first. Just to make sure I'm not missing anything, if at all. Um... What's going here? <laughs> I'm sure it is. Oh. Yeah, I guess it is. Alright. Nothing in here. What about this door? <laughs> well, we did get some hell mustard out of that, so... Yeah, I guess it's not a total loss. Right, checking feverishly for possible additionals, because I don't typically search for them. Nothing to find over here. Now, did we come from this direction? No, we did not, so we can check the rooms in here as well. Another Christmas tree. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time, and we found another score piece, alright. In case you were wondering. Yeah, because, yes, trying to find those people who want to play score pieces, still a bit of a challenge. Especially if you don't find the right person to play with. Alright. Oh, and here's B. Where's this ship from, anyway? I mean, look at this! A soft bed in a big room! It's like a hotel! <laughs> the worn-out fishing boats in Ritardondo are nothing like this! <laughs> no, I'm sure they're not. Anything at all? Anything else left to find or possibly discover? Nope, looks like we covered it all. Alright, so, yeah, I guess we're done checking the contents of the rooms and the below decks, so let's go over this way. Because it's time for another cutscene. And we're gonna have a bit of a conversation between Frederick and Polka. So the world is all just Frederick's dream. Yeah, Polka still convinced herself of that. Good evening, Frederick. I see you haven't woken up from your dream yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Polka. Oh, hello, Polka. Are you having trouble sleeping? Yes. I'm still worried about the others. Yeah, I can completely understand why. Polka, there was something I said to you before. About the way everything in the world slowly fades away, gradually losing its color. But since I've come to this place, I've begun to feel as if that is somehow being reversed. What makes you say that there, Frederick? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, compared to when I first came to this world, now when I look around, I feel as if everything in the world is becoming more vivid, more clear. It certainly looks that way with a starry sky, doesn't it? Yeah, it's snowing, but yet there's not a cloud in the sky. Is this world, which must be a dream, somehow becoming more real? Or does it only prove that I myself am slipping away, fading even faster than the world around me? Yeah, he's still being very philosophical about his interpretations of things. For example, I find myself wondering about whether the others are all right. Genuine feelings for them. Not long ago, I wouldn't have cared what happened to them. Why should I when none of this is actually happening? But now, I'm genuinely concerned. Yeah, it's certainly very strange, I don't isn't know it? Why, but I feel a strong sense of solidarity, a connection with the people of this world. Well. I think that's a perfectly normal way for you to feel. Oh yeah? After all, 
It's only natural to worry about people you've spent time with and grown to care about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, before I had this illness, everything around me seemed so dull and ordinary. Really? Even though you were entertaining so Since many people? I found out my life would soon be over. Even little things seem to shine with an inner light. Like the sound of wood crackling in a fireplace. The smell of a campfire. Leaves slowly floating down a stream. The gentle sound of falling snow. Which is very gentle, by the way. If you ever get to experience it for yourself. Now that I think about it, I probably only feel that way because I am approaching death myself. Have begun to fade more rapidly. Just as Amelia did. Yeah, remember that name from all the way back in episode Amelia? one? Well, it's time to put. My sister. Yep. That's the name of Chopin's she sister. She was only 14 when she was struck down by tuberculosis. The exact age you are now. Oh. Your sister was my age when she. I see. Yeah, it kind of puts a connection there, doesn't it? How terrifying it must have been for her. Forced to accept an inescapable fate. She must have had so many hopes and dreams. Why? Why does God allow such things to happen to good people? It is the unfortunate fate of the world. Chance to live. Poor Amelia. It is sad, but everyone dies eventually. Indeed, it is true. It's just that for some people like Amelia and me, it happens a little bit earlier, that's all. Besides, in a way, Amelia still lives on, doesn't she? Yeah, that she does. She lives on inside your heart, Frederick. And she lives in the wonderful music that your heart creates. That she does. She also lives on inside all the people of the world whose hearts are moved when they listen to your music. Amelia won't ever really die. She'll touch the hearts of every generation to come. Through her brother's melodies, she will live on forever. So, well, sounds very heroic, doesn't it? I think that's wonderful. Frederick, do you need any more proof that part of her still lives on than the thought of that? You know, Polka, whenever I'm with you, I feel like I'm talking to Amelia. Oh, really? It's almost as if Amelia is saying the very same things to me. I guess Polka's done her job, hasn't she? Yeah, Polka said she wanted to help as many people as she could before she passed on. And I think she's definitely helped Frederick come to terms with his past. Thank you, Polka. I believe you've taught me something very important tonight. Very important indeed. Well, she is the lead heroine. She has to kind of demonstrate that she is capable of being capable of saying such wonderful things. Frederick, there's just something about you that draws others to you. And, since I met you, my way of thinking has changed quite a bit. Like how you can't say these things directly to his face and after he's just left? Sorry I had to say Although that. I didn't realize it before. I think I've been dwelling on the past and ignoring the future. Because thinking about the future is just too painful when you know you're going to die soon. Yeah, there's definitely truth in that. But you told me when we met that this whole world existed inside your dream, right? At first, I thought you were teasing me by saying that this was your dream. But now, 
I actually think that it's a really beautiful idea. And now I realize that believing in you is really the same thing as believing in the future. That's especially important for someone like me, who uses magic. You help me be more positive about the future, and what I need to do. I should really be thanking you, Frederick, because you've taught me something very important, too. Yeah. Quite a beautiful little monologue, soliloquy, soliloquy there from Polko. However, this beautiful piece has now just gotten shattered. And what's the responsibility? What, what has exactly caused that shattering? Well, we have some suspenseful music. We gotta go above deck, or to the top of the deck, and figure out what the heck just happened to us. So, what did happen? Damn it! Of all the times for this to happen. Yep. That's a big ship. Well, what is it? Oh, you're gonna learn the hard way. It's a pirate ship. They appear out of nowhere sometimes and attack vessels that travel up this river. Yeah, and he did see river. The pirates. These pirates must be from Pittsburgh. Ram their unsuspecting target. That's terrible. Maybe there's something we can do. We should repay them for helping us. And by us, she's referring to the crew of the Baroque vessel. But whatever we do, we have to move quickly or those people will try to board this ship. Yeah, we're gonna take up arms. It's far too dangerous. These pirates, even their underlings, are very strong. Hey, that's no way for our captain to talk. Don't worry about a thing. Just leave it to us. Very self-assured there, Beat. Yeah, meanwhile, Salsa got pulled out of bed. Well, this'll wake you up. That's it! That's it! You know they got a captain with an eye patch and a hook! Oh, yeah. and I'll bet they have a lot of treasure. Yeah, and that encourages Polka, or rather Salsa, to take the lead. Don't just stay there, Frederick. You gotta follow him. All right, we'll go over and keep them occupied. Meanwhile, try to pull the ship away as far as you can to keep them from boarding. Yeah, right. I'll do everything I can. Very good. If you'll excuse me. And so, yep, we'll do what we can to defeat these Pittsburgh pirates. So, yeah, don't worry, he's on our side. Alright, over to the save point. So as it stands right now, Polka, Frederick, and Beat are our main party, which is exactly what we want to have happen. Let's go ahead and see where we can distribute and allocate accessories. Um, I want to... Well, I actually do want to give the Brilliant Brooch to Polka. Since Frederick will be doing a lot of attacking in the, in there, we'll give him the recovery gloves. And might as well put, distribute some defense too. Um, yeah, increase the accessories that B had from plus twos to plus threes. So, yeah, I believe we are good with what we have, so it looks like we are ready to go. So let's go ahead and take the save, because, yeah, we're done here, so it's time to bring today's recordings to a close. Yeah, we jumped from the death of Claves and discovering that she was a spy in the previous episode, to now having our second group getting attacked by a pirate vessel. So, yeah, wish us luck, because we're going to need it. And so, with that, I'd like to... Going to bring this episode to a close aboard the pirate ship Dolce. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Eternal Sonata. And when I join you again, we will go below deck as we try and defeat these Pittsburgh pirates. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew with Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.